Welcome to Super Soul Sisters. My name is Lona Kasasa Jomaima and I'm so glad that you could join us today. With me, I have a very lovely and special Super Soul Sister who I'm excited to introduce you to. She is going to inspire your life. Uh, she's a very renowned lawyer, politician and also a farmer and she's going to tell us all about that. I hope you are ready to dive into, into her story and be inspired like I am. Uh, I, want to th I want to thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, I want to also encourage you to please go on our different social media platforms. Super Soul Sisters is our handle on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube with the S of Super and Soul being number three. So please leave in your comments, your reviews. I'm sure we will be very excited to hear from you. Thank Honorable you. Joy. Thank you very much yes. and thank you for really thinking of me and yeah. coming to interview me it is an honor for you to join us and inspire the so. different ladies who will be watching well thank you very much i hope i will inspire a few young ladies yes mm. um please tell us about yourself oh my name is joy kafura kabati mm. i even have another name which my father gave me yes chomjisha but i kept graduating mm -hmm. then i I used my father's name, I was Joy Kafura, and now after marriage I became Joy Kafura Kabatsi. Yes. Yes. Uh, who were you born to? Well, my parents, uh, they have both gone to be with the Lord, but mm -hmm. they were Festo Kafura and Janet Kafura. Yes. Mm. Uh, in a family of how many? Oh, family of seven children. Yes. yes. Tell, us, tell us about your childhood. How was it growing up? with seven children? Oh, it was quite nice. At the beginning, we were a bit divided. Yes. Uh, I am the first born. Amazing. And with my brother, the second born, for the f youngest time of our life, we lived with our grandmother. Yes. We live in a village called Rubaya. Mm. That's the sub-county in Kashari, in Barara district used to be in the past yes. and uh, Rubaya didn't have a good school for primary mm. so my brother and I we my father got land near Rutoma mm. Rutoma primary school that time Rutoma primary school was the best in our area yes. so we lived with our grandmother and we I lived with her from P1 up to P7. Wow, that's a yeah. long time. <laughs> yeah. She was a very, very nice old lady. Mm. Very, very clean. So I never had issues of not being smart. <laughs> I was always smart. Yes. I never was ever canned for going late. You're because done. she was like a, I don't know, yes. a clock. <laughs> she knew when to say time. You have to be ready, you have to leave, you have to go to school. So I was always on time. Mm. And uh, she didn't really ask us to do so much work. Yes. My friends at school would be complaining. They had mm. to collect water, they had to do. Fortunately for me, yeah. I never did much yes. with my grandmother. Everything was done for us. And all we needed to do was to be at school in time and be smart in our uniforms and that's what we did <laughs> yes mm. uh how was you said you grew up with your grandmother so how was did you ever visit your parents oh yes oh yes we visited our parents mm. every time we had holidays and and we could walk ah. at times we could walk for, for a weekend but it was hard we could walk go to rubaya spend a weekend sunday Mm. We come back to Rutoma. Mm. Ah, mm. so you never. It is about ten kilometers apart. There weren't uh, taxis at the time. No. Uh, board. Nothing. Not mode of No border border. Eh. Mm. We used to walk. I mm. guess. Yes. Mm. So after primary, where did you go to? After study? primary school, went to where I went to where Yes. Garu school. Primary was so interesting. Mm -hmm. I wish I had remained so intelligent. <laughs> because th we had a lot of boys in class, but we beat the boys like ah. hell. Yes. 
from P1 up to 7, yes. I had a friend of mine. Either she was number one and I was number two, or I was number one, she was number, number two. two. Yes. And we, both of us, went to Weranyanji. Because Weranyanji was, at that time, the best school in, in Ankori. Yes. Mm. So it's safe to say that you went to the best schools at the time? At the time, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. How was your transition from primary to secondary? It was a bit, a bit hard. You know, when you leave home yes. to start getting used to girls, yeah. many girls in a school, <laughs> many <laughs> girls in a hostel. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit hard. And they used to tease. Mm. So the those whom we found there really teased us. The, so mm. fellow girls were teasing. Yeah, fellow they were girls. teasing. Yeah, ah. they used to call us and phobe, those who are coming in, what? Mm. But of course, also, it's after one year, and we also tease those who come. <laughs> <laughs> and the cycle continues. And the cycle continues, yes. yes. Mm. So there was nothing significant that happened in Olevo? Not, not much, but we were really trained to be God-fearing God yes. girls, yes. yes. And everyone who has gone to Weranyanji, mm. there is that heavy impact yeah. of the... Christian belief of yes. being saved, of all sorts of things. If yeah. you interview a girl from Weranyanji, that is what you will get. Christ, uh, Christianity. Yes, that mm. is amazing. Mm. So and very good values of life. Principles. Yeah, principles. Yes. yes. So after after uh, O level, did you stay for A level or you changed? Oh, unfortunately, Weranyanji did not have A level. Uh, so you changed. So I changed. And for my A level, I was going to Tororo Girls. Mm. But my auntie who lived in Jinja said, no, there is a good school now with a good, uh, good headmaster mm. who is disciplining everyone. So he took me to Namasagari. Yes. She took me to Namasagali. Namasagali is was was it uh, mixed? Or yes, it was mixed. Yes. Wh uh, which did you prefer? Uh, was it a mixed school? It was a, I preferred the girls' school, but my aunt chose to take me to Namasagali. To Namasagali. Yes. And what subjects did you offer at the time? I did arts. You did arts. Mm. Yes. I have a history of doing arts. Yes. Because I wanted to be a lawyer. Yes. My father, since I grew up, had a case. And he never had good lawyers. And he was actually right, but he had no defense. So he said to me, study and come and argue my case. So my whole study, my whole life was mm. based on doing, studying and coming to defend and, my yeah. father in court and sh he was so close to me he was my best friend yeah. actually i would want to talk to young ladies who are now getting babies and yeah. it is very very important for a young baby or girl to be close to their father there's a kind of a kind of confidence fathers give to their daughters mm -hmm. And that confidence continues even in marriage, yes. everywhere. You, you permanently are confident if you have been really given the confidence from yes. your father. So my father gave me a lot of confidence. Yes. As you see me here, I am so confident <laughs> <laughs> I, about everything, everything in life. I am. I cannot be threatened, not easily. I'm very, very confident. And I got it from my father. Yeah. And I would want to ask young men who are getting daughters now, mm. be close to your daughters. Give them the confidence because it really helps them as they grow. Mm. It's, very, it's very interesting that you pointed that out because in this day and era, mm. in the community we are living in now, mm. it's all about women, women emancipation, women equality. And uh, many have... Uh, I, I guess along the lines, we forget the importance or the role of a father in anybody's upbringing. So uh, it's very interesting that you say, is it safe to say that you are a daddy's girl at the time? Oh, yes. 
<laughs> very, very Even true. Even with you being the firstborn. Yes. Ah. And I remained daddy's girl to the end. Amazing. Yes. That and you know, with all the rules of the society, mm. we are like when he dies, he has to leave the son in charge. He actually left me in charge. I'm heir to <laughs> my father's everything. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we should, the fathers should really give courage to their daughters. Mm. Mm. Thank you for the in, enlightening that. So after A level, mm. uh, where do you do your university? After A level, uh, that is where I parted with my friend. Yes. Oh, my so you friend, were with her from my primary. My friend, we were together from primary, from P1. Wow. Yeah. But uh, we parted at university. I went to Dar es Salaam. Yes. And she went to Makerere. Yes. But we did law, both of us. She had her own reasons for doing law, okay. <laughs> which she must have told you. Mm. And my reasons were my father. Yes. I wanted to come and defend him. But do you know, I never made it to defend him. I actually encouraged him to settle the matter out of court and just mm. forget it. Mm. I said, this has really put a strain on, you, on your life. I'm a lawyer, but I will not go on with mm. this. Let's just let them be. It was a land issue. Yes. Mm. What, what, uh, what inspired you to give him that advice? Was it after going through the law school and seeing how it works, or it was the entire situation? It's uh, the, the original man mm. had died. Uh -huh. Now you had to go to court with the estate of his children. and So I said to my father, let's have what God has given us. Mm. Let's leave him to take that piece of land. But it, was, it really hurt him because it was the piece on top of a hill. <laughs> so he used to say, oh, my hill, my mm. hill. I said, no, it's let's right. leave it. He said, then what law did you study <laughs> if you can't defend mm. me? I said, you know, this is a defense. Mm. If we can get over this and move on with, mm. with life. Mm. Interesting. So mm. tell us. Tell our viewers about law school. How was it going through law school? Well, law school was good. Mm. Um, but as, as girls, we would suffer. Why is that? The boys. Ah, the teasing. Mm. The engineers. You know, at Dar es Salaam University, engineers, we are so good at drawing pictures. And they are... Hall was very close to the hall of the girls. So they used to come and go in the trees and see who is going out, which car is taking you. And, and then we had a big wall, a literature wall, mm. behind our cafeteria. A cafeteria where everybody yes. had meals. So the boys would watch you, the car that has taken you, and the next day you were on the literature wall. <laughs> and everyone will recognize that it's you. Yes. They will draw you there, put your picture and the car that took you. And if, if they saw the man, they will draw him. <laughs> so it was such a scary mm. thing. Every time after breakfast, you look to see who is there. If you are going out, you go hiding. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a tough time, yes. the time of our university. The boys were really, really tough mm. and teasing people. Yes. There are girls who, whom there is a girl, they put so much on the literature wall and she had to leave. Really? Mm. It never happened at Makerere. That was yes. Dar es Salaam University. Yes. Mm. Were you ever on that wall? I survived narrowly. Yes. Why do you say Towards, narrowly? because the picture I was escorting my friend to the car, the picture which came, no one could recognize it was me. It was you. Yeah, because <laughs> I was behind a, a, another girl. Mm. So it never came out clear that that's me. Yes. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> it was a bit of torture for young people. Mm. Every day you were thinking, maybe I'm the one who is there. It was not only going out. It was anything they would hear about. They would put it on the literature wall. Mm. Mm. And uh, you had, I'm sure you had friends who were on the wall. Yes. Think, yes. How did they used to deal with that? How did you help as a friend? We had to 
to just calm them down yes. and say, if these boys... You never reported mm. it to the administration or it was... They knew it. Ah. Mm. So they, they just it. let the bullying go on? Yes, yes, yes. And they enjoyed it. Ah. And the teachers would even ask, oh, who, who is on the literature oh, world today, you ladies? Ah, it was culture. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. So anyway, going back to the law school, Mm. and uh, studying in a different country with different friends. Mm. Did that anyway impact on how you processed law or did you maybe regret going to study law in another country? No, I actually loved it. Yes. Yeah. It was very good to go to another country. To another for, country. Yeah. With your friend? Mm. Uh, did with, I would come back home mm, yes. and I would meet her. And compare. Always and compare. Yeah. Mm. Would you advise... Uh, someone to go into a different law school uh, in a different country, for example, lawyers, would it be yeah. more advisable to study outside yeah. the country you want to practice in? Yes, and uh, if you can afford it, Britain. Yes. But these other countries, apart from Dar es Salaam, you would have problems. Uh, why is that? Going to LDC. Mm. There are certain subjects that some other universities don't offer. Mm. And that if you haven't done them, then you cannot you cannot go to LDC. Yes. If if the university offers different courses that you, LDC doesn't take, then you miss LDC, mm. and then you can't be an advocate. Uh, so we've heard about your school. We've heard about uh, your family. Uh, would you tell the viewers who, you, how would you describe yourself as a as a woman, as a lady? Now I'm um, a wife. Yes. I have a loving husband. I'm a mother. I have children and a grandmother. <laughs> I mean, that is really a bit complete, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Yeah. As complete as it mm. can get. Yes. <laughs> so I thank God for yeah. that. I would thank God mm. that I have. I'm what I am. Mm. It is all to do with luck and God and Him directing you, mm. giving you direction in what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything significant in your childhood, maybe school, that you know you will never forget? I can't think of something suddenly mm. Mm. because I, I never had anything dramatic. Yes. I finished school with all my parents, I've married and had all my children with yes. all my parents. I, I, don't, I don't remember anything so, dramatic apart from the politics. Uh, oh, tell us about the politics. <sighs> the politics. We couldn't come home. I couldn't come home yes, after why? my university. Why was that? I, that's the time there was war. Mm. In the, the, the president now, that's when they were in the bush. Mm. And by the what university I had met the president. Ah, yes. you studied together? Were no. You, yeah. <laughs> he happened to come yes. and address us. Ah. Yes. They used to come. Mm. And I also met the, pre the former president of Bote. Mm. I went to his house and we had discussions. Ah. In that, politics was really was Hot. Yes. Mm. Did the poli did the situation inspire you to continue into being a politician? Yes. It did. Yes. With the, still the chaos. I there. knew I wouldn't do much in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I promised myself that I would contribute when the president Yes. And I was so sure he was going to take power. Ah. When he addressed us, I mm. saw the confidence I I knew. Mm. Where, and some of my friends who had finished actually joined him yes. immediately. Ah, mm. That is amazing. Yeah. Thank you, our viewers, for staying tuned. We are going to dive into uh, Honorable Joy's career right after this break. Welcome back, our viewers. Uh, from that very brief break, I would like to encourage you to comment, leave your remarks, uh, your views on the different social media platforms. On YouTube, Super Soul Sisters, Super and Soul having late number three as their S. On TikTok, at Super Soul Sisters, no space in between that. Instagram, our handle is still Super Soul Sisters. 
with uh, spaces with the dash bar, of course. And Twitter at super, our handle is still Super Soul Sisters Uganda. We were still having a conversation with Honor Bojo, who is our Super Soul Sister today. So right after university, tell us how where how your career begins. Oh, after university, I didn't come back home. Mm. I got a job in Zambia. Ah, what yes. took you to Zambia? Here there were problems. Yes, mm. and in Tanzania, you couldn't stay in Dar es Salaam? And I couldn't stay in Dar es Salaam. The yes. pay was, was bad. Yes. But the recruitment in uh, Tanzania, they would take me as a, a Tanzanian. Mm. The recruitment in Zambia would make me an expatriate. <laughs> so I jumped to that. Yes. Uh, I was lecturing at their National Institute of Public Administration. Mm. It was very interesting. All the lawyers, it is the LDC there. Mm. All the lawyers were there. And we had other courses we were handling, mm. administrative law and commercial law, criminal law. Mm. So that was very interesting. And uh, where mm. did you go after Zambia? I was there for 1988. Mm. 1988, President Museven came to Zambia. Mm. And we went to the airport to correct him. I mean, to welcome him. Yes. At the airport, when he was greeting everyone, when he reached me, he held my hand and said, you are here? I said, yes. He said, what are you doing here? Come home. Mm. Uh, I tell you, that was it. I, when I got home, I just packed my bags. Yes. Mm. I packed my bags, mm. and I came home in 1988. In 1988, mm. after a very long time without seeing Without you. seeing my how people. Did, how did your people welcome me, seeing you? Oh, my father was uh, very happy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is he had actually written to me a letter mm. saying if I if he dies before I come and he's I don't bury him mm. it will not be good. He said you have to come and bury me. And when I came I didn't bury him. He lived and he's <laughs> we lived together for very many years. He mm. just died recently about a year ago. Yes. yes. Mm. Uh, so tell us about your journey in Uganda. You've left Zambia. How do you, where do you go from there? I, I was a bit sharp in Zambia. I, by the time I, I, when I came, mm. I organized a very good job with World Bank. How did you, how were you able to do that? I was able to do that by looking at what the country needed and checking on the projects that were coming mm. and I, I joined one of them. So, in so you, when you I became Uganda. an administrator for a World Bank project wow. that was going to rehabilitate statistics. Mm. This was in Entebbe. Mm. So that is how I started. I and I got that job immediately so I didn't suffer. Mm. Mm. So you were never one of those people who finish university mm. and then have maybe space yeah. within? No, I wasn't. Yeah, that, uh, that's amazing. I've been very lucky with jobs. Mm. Yeah. But you remember my name is Chomujisha. Yeah. Chomujisha means you, you have luck. Yes. Mm, you have luck okay. with you. I've been lucky with, with jobs mm. up to recently. Yes. Mm. Uh, so what were your biggest challenges? as when you joined the World Bank? There were very many challenges we had to deal with. Mm. We are just starting. The project was in stat statistics. We did the first census, mm. 1990. So we had to plan for that. And we had to find out the cost of living. Mm. We used to send people to town to collect food and what and buy and come and tell us the prices, how mm. things were going. It was very interesting. It was a very interesting mm. job. And we did what we could 
we actually did the rehabilitation of statistics mm. and now they are doing very well in town ah. yeah so and household incomes and mm. all that we we well, send people there. and uh, yeah okay. the world bank yes yeah uh, so at that time were you married at the time or you were still single trying to to luckily enough i immediately i came mm. i got my now husband mm, yes mm. why did you meet him that's another interesting story mm. because when i decided to come to uganda i didn't wait so i packed all my things in boxes in what put them on the plane mm. somehow i didn't pay all your yeah, to... because these were boxes. I brought my TV, I brought my fridge, ah. I brought... <laughs> my friends were saying, but this is madness. Do you have money to pay? Mm. I said, God will pay. You had so faith. I took everything to the plane. Yes. Kenya Airways. How did you know? And Kenya Airways put them in. Ah. And that was God at work because I was praying. Everything was, was put on the plane mm. and brought up to Entebbe. Now, getting to Entebbe, I had a problem because they realized I hadn't paid. So they confiscated mm. all my luggage. Okay. All my cargo was confiscated and they took my passport. So they said, you can't have the passport until you go and organize money to pay for the freight of this mm. equipment and everything I carried. I had a friend in town who told me, you know, they have no right to take your property and to take your uh, passport. Let's go to the DPP. Mm. So we went to the DPP. And the DPP is now my husband. Wow. That's how it moved <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> Yeah. He was able to help you. He said, now you forget about all these things. I told him the full story. He said, you forget about these things. You'll get your passport and I will deliver your, your things. Yes. Yeah. And, it's such a and he delivered everything, brought my passport, and that was the beginning of our yeah. relationship. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's you know how God can work mm. out things. Yes. Mm. So after the World Bank. Yes. You were with your husband at the time? Yes. And uh, after the World Bank, where do you go after that? I then joined URA. Yes. I worked for URA. People think I got a job from the president, mm. but it wasn't. Mm. There was a Ghanaian commissioner general whom we approached with recommendation from World Bank. Mm. And he gave me a job straight. Just like that? Just like that said you come and start on monday it was a wednesday you really had luck yes <laughs> it is important to give your child a good name because mm. mm. <laughs> my name is luck yes yes and you had it all and way. i had i had luck in that yes mm. uh working for the world bank was how different was it coming into ura it was it was really different but you always have to adjust yes. and... Mm. In, what, in what terms was it different? There I was in control. Mm. Here in URA I wasn't. Uh -huh. I was the legal officer, but I wasn't, I wasn't in control of mm. many things. Mm. <laughs> you were, how, how did you negotiate, like go through that? Because from someone to be in control, to be a leader, and then to be someone who has mm. to follow. It's a big change. It was people. a big change, but I was the, the lawyer. I was still at yes. the top. Yes, mm. not so. Not so low. Yes. Mm. And uh, how do you become the state minister in 2019? Um, I then became the executive assistant to the commissioner general. Mm. Anne Bridge, she was a white lady. And when her term ended, I had to leave. Yes. Mm. Ah. And when I left, I joined politics. <laughs> mm. how, is, how did politics treat you as a, as a woman? Ah, very hard. 
Mm. Up to today, I've never won election. <laughs> and at the beginning, I was mm. actually doing well. Yes. I used to have all the people, but at the end of it, I would have no votes. Why? Why is that? Why do you rigging. Think? Really? Mm. There was a lot of rigging. Um, and there was nothing to be done about that. There was nothing that. to be done. Yes. Yeah. How did that affect And it, it, it affects us all as a yes. country. When somebody is not v voted for, mm. I think that is the worst bit of corruption. Mm. When you rig elections, someone should be voted for. Mm. Then you really come and represent your people. Mm. But when you know it was money or it's your tricks you rigged. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Mm. And my district has never really gone through mm. proper elections. It is one of those districts, same bubble. Mm. That's where I live. It was one of those districts where no, they don't, they are not represented by people they have voted for. It's always tricks. How do you think yeah. they can change that? We heard there were going to be reforms. Mm. We hope they will. And our new people have come, and powerful people there. Mm. Maybe it will change. Did. Uh, Joining politics affect how you raised your children, how you handled your family affairs? I actually joined politics when my children were big enough. They were big enough. Mm. So how, how many children do you have? Five. Five children. Mm. How was it like raising them it as was a fun. working class <laughs> lady? It was fun. Yes. Yeah, although now when they, they are big, when they talk to me, ah, they complain, you used to leave us. There, <laughs> were those ho there was this house girl. There was this. Yes. But when they were growing up, it mm. was fun. I never noticed you anything. Did? Yeah. Mm. And uh, you We had a very good girl. driver who was always on time to drop them at school. Mm. Now they say, now why were we being dropped by driver? Why didn't you drop us? But I had to prepare. I yes. was also going to work. <laughs> so, but for me, it was okay. Yes. Mm. How did you handle the house girl situation? You mentioned house girls. Now they tell me they didn't like the house girls. But at the time, hmm. I, I had only one. I never changed them. You I had do. one house girl? Yes. She never had mm. any problem? No. For me, I liked her. And wow. the way she handled my children. Yes. So I stayed with her. She didn't do anything malicious? No. No. Wow. Mm. Maybe we should have an interview with the children because they have yeah, a different story. Yeah, they have a different story, <laughs> especially my last born. Yeah. Mm. Who I thought he, she really loved. Mm. said, no, she was not my mother. Why should she have loved me? <laughs> now, what do you say to that? Yes, <laughs> what, mm. what should a mother mm. do? <laughs> what should a mother do? Yeah. Mm. It is hard when you have to go to, to work. You have to have someone to take care of your mm. babies. How and, are you able to and this care? idea of saying, no, stay, mm. take care of the babies, mm. it can work. But your ma husband must have enough money. Mm. Mm. And once you become, you stay and you become dependent on him, some issues come up. Mm. Mm. That's why for the young ladies, for me, I would say, be financially Stable. able. Work hard, study hard, and make sure you have some money for yourself. Mm. Mm. So, and uh, I want to stick to this house girl situation, because right now it's a problem in so mm. many homes. Mm. Uh, we have seen different videos of house girls beating young children, mistreating, mm. doing so many bad things. So. How was it? Did you have cameras? Did you have maybe a system? How did how were you able to retain her and for her to raise all your children? Fortunately, I was living with my mother-in-law. Yes, she lived with me all all the time. Most of it. Most all the time. Oh wow! Mm. Okay. So, the time they were growing up as babies, she kept her eye yes. on what was happening. Mm. Mm. She was your camera. She was my camera. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is very good if you can get someone to be with you 
and be your camera. Mm. Some close relative mm. who would want somewhere to stay, mm. whom you trust, to be there and be your camera. Mm. Mm. So what advice would you give the different young girls? This show is for young ladies, mm. for all the women. What advice would you give them for them to be successful? It's all about hard work. Mm. From school, work hard at school, make sure you... It might be difficult to get a job now. Mm. It was much easier for us. But if you are intelligent, you will get something to do. Mm. Mm. And what happens if you fall short in the intelligent category? For example, though the people who are intelligent mm. and have working hard, but they still aren't there. What they are still not where they want to be. What advice would you give them? Find something practical. Mm. Yeah. There are so many institutions now. Mm. Government, or oh, is it the president, has put so many technical institutions. Go and do hair. Mm. Go and do makeup for ladies mm. go and do some, but do it well it will pay mm. go and do handcrafts do whatever you do with your back intelligence from school you will do it well mm. go and ask your father if he has land do some farming mm. and farm on things that you know would sell so many things you can do so many things. Mm. But I advise young ladies, please do something. Not to just Don't sit. look for a husband <laughs> who is working very hard mm. and say, oh, I will enjoy his money. Have something also mm. going for yourself. If he has money, let him open up something for you mm. that you can do. But don't sit and wait to get every shilling from the from your husband. Mm. I never did it, so I can't advise anyone <laughs> to, do <laughs> to do it. Yes. Yes, mm. amazing. We never mm. got into detail uh, about your practical side. It's uh, that you are you're a farmer, right? Yes. And I really would want to help the community mm. where I live mm. to get out of poverty. That community where I live, they don't bank. Mm. Nothing. There are no banks in the, in, the, in, the, in the whole of that village and the whole of that sub-county where I come from. They don't bank money. They, someone will sell his cow and put the money in the pocket or put under the pillow and use. When it finishes, he sells another. And that's how they live. Mm. No saving, no bank systems for them. So I have opened up a, fi a foundation, mm. Chomi Foundation, where I want to teach financial literacy to our people, yes. especially the women there. And they work so hard. Mm. But the money, when you say your husband is watching, you have no bank. You have to spend that money until it is finished. Save for school fees. It is, it is something I'm trying to do mm. in the village, financial interest. And now the president and the government has mm. given them money down to the parish level. They have to be assisted. Our people, they never get assistance. That money will just, yes. and they will account for it. Accountability is okay. But you find the poorest has not gained mm. from that. So we need to teach our people slowly. You just do the bit that you can manage. Mm. I can't say I will do too much, <laughs> but I can do the little that I can manage. Yes. Whoever leader comes to me for assistance, I show her what to do. And they always come when I'm in the village. <laughs> you find my balcony is full. full. Mm. How often do you go to the village? Once in two weeks. Oh, that's... Mm. Very mm. often. Once in two weeks. Yeah, okay. All right. Any mm. last remarks that you would like to give our viewers? For me, I would want to tell the ladies to be truthful. Mm. Never tell lies. 
The truth is what sets us free. Don't go into a relationship of lies. Don't tell lies. Just be yourself. Be yourself, you young ladies. Live your life that God has given you. Don't infect it with lies and all sorts of things. Just be straight. Live your life. Tell the truth. And that sets you free. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for those wise words, for that inspirational story. She, um, Honorable here mentioned uh, the importance of the name that you give your child. I think something that many of us have taken for granted many times. But her name means luck and she was indeed lucky most all her entire life. Anyway, I would like to thank you for all that have stayed tuned all this while. Thank you for the remarks on the different social media platforms. I hope to see you very soon next time. And I hope that you have gained a lot from our Super Soul Sister today. Have a nice evening.